Yo, what's good? What's good? Back with a new reaction. And uh, man, once again, y'all let me know in the comment section if y'all rocking with the reactions, man. I'm definitely having a ball. Like I said, this is stuff that I do on a daily basis, but why not turn it into, you know, a hobby? You feel me? I'm already in tune with the YouTube stuff anyway, you know, so it's what I do on a normal basis. So why not, you know what I'm saying, start posting the things that I like and I listen to. That are just now I can share it with y'all. Bro, I find this real interesting. This is probably one of the most powerful lives my son Campbell has ever done. Dude came with banger after banger after banger after banger. It's so many bangers that I don't know if I want to split this up or play the whole things. But what I do know, we finna get into it. Let's go. So it's safe to say, by this, at this point in time, most of y'all heard that audio with QCP. His mother accusing him of being what? Mm. What y'all didn't listen? Mm. The nigga moms accused him of being a warlock. The industry being filled with witch. How long have we been saying this shit? I was talking about this type of stuff before I knew about YouTube. Before I knew they had an audience on YouTube that was talking about this. Like, you know, I I didn't know Hassan Campbell. I found Hassan Campbell maybe two, three years ago. I've been talking about the conspiracy shit that I, I show y'all now. I've been talking about it since I was a little kid. I called my dad up. He'll say, yes, he been talking about that. My, like I told y'all in a previous video, my dad would call me the devil because I would be saying stuff about, you know, the Bible and, 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 and my belief and how I see the world. And they was like, man, ain't, nah, what, what you, what, what's going on with you? You smoking or something? You high? I've been on this stuff. So the fact that it, it, it's irritating, I'm going to be honest, it's irritating when you be trying to help somebody, or you trying to help your community, but nobody pay attention to your voice. And that's why I had to use 2K. I had to use 2K because my voice is loud in 2K. I have a name. Even though I don't play 2K, right? I can play 2K. Like, I don't play it, but I can hop on right now, pull 100, 200 views. You know what I'm saying? That's big in the 2K market. Uh, I was a top dog at one point. Um, 500 plus views. I was a top dog, you know, but like I said, I walked away from it. So now, you know, I can get on now and probably pull 100, 200. Well, I mean, not 100, 200, two something, you know, people still rock with me. So I use 2K to get my message out, my message out about stuff like this. But like I said, I just got tired of playing 2K because that's not really where my passion at. That's not what I want to do. I really want to talk about this stuff. And man, to hear him say this and to know that, okay, yeah, I might can't be the one that wakes somebody up or help somebody see the truth in this world filled with lies. I might can't do that for everybody, but it's good to know there's somebody out there doing it. Kyrie Irving apologized. I, I'm happy he apologized. I realize a lot of people want someone to fight for them and that person lose everything while they continue to gain what they're out here to gain. We'll talk about that on another video, but I'm happy Kyrie Irving apologized. He stood out here long enough for you to understand the truth. I don't care if none of these celebrities stay out here forever. The fact that they come out here and they expose real stuff and then they go apologize and get back to what they doing, I like that. You motherfuckers that be sitting out here want motherfuckers to sacrifice everything for your lazy ass when you don't do nothing but sit here, yeah, yeah, that fucked up. Woo -woo. You don't really do no fighting, no standing. So I'm happy Kyrie Irving apologized. I'm happy Kanye West apologized. Go back and get their bag. They brought the information out here. Now what you gonna do with it? 
Now we got more information. Let's get it. I, I, you know, I be going on these rant because like I said, I have my own mind. So I've been doing this research. So I ease for me to jump off and go into my own information. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm always downloading new information and to hear that the mother of QC came out and said the same thing we've been saying out here, but we just little people. I know, you know, so nobody listen to little, you know, me. Man, you know, what you talking about? Sacrificing the conspiracy. Man, come on, bro. You tripping. You tripping. <laughs> is he is is his mama tripping? Yes. QCP mama accused him mm. of blood sacrifice and takeoff. Mm. Come Let's on, keep now. it all the way funky, it, y'all. For it, don't years. No, it don't get no realer than that. It don't get no realer than that. All y'all been talking about is conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. But when the mother of the music industry, of the mobile of the music industry, the CEO of the music industry, when she accuses her own son of sacrifice That's and deep. takeoff, what are y'all going to tell me? Why isn't that not blowing up? This man's own mother accused him of sacrificing a major artist. His mother. And that story is not blowing up. But we got more stories. Shout out to Hassan Campbell. We got another story that is crazy. And it's not. Let, let me slow down. All right, let's go. Mark, usually disagree. Dice on, but you're right. Joe, welcome to the membership chat. Shout out to you, Joe. The mama. Mm. Look at the world we live in. That's cold. Look at the world. Just connect the lie, dots. That's cold, though. Look at the world that we live in. That. That's cold. Your mother. And the story not popular like Show it should something, be. Show y'all something, man. Crazy. There's so many topics I just let I, I I let go by that I haven't been dealing with. I just been chilling, and, just watching, just and, analyzing. And this is what I mean by y'all see how he just that was deep what he just said. And the reason I like it so much because Hassan Campbell is a celebrity to a lot of people. So for him to be saying what he's saying, oh yeah, I like that because he can reach people that I can't reach. And the people he can't reach, I might can reach him. I said, camera don't play 2K. I do. That's why I bring my information over to my community. That's why I force myself to play 2K so I can slide in this information. And then hopefully that person will reciprocate what I'm saying and, and do his own research, his or her own research. You feel me? But look how he just got off of that right there. That was a major hit. That story is not around like that nobody's really talking about that how his own mother accused him of being a warlock and there's witches and, and warlocks in the industry so if it's in the industry that means it's in the world pay attention but he got off of that and finna hit right on another crazy one check this out awesome. that's why bro like it, this live was crazy man show y'all something craziest live i ever seen him do like just back to back. Streets no of plan. Brooklyn are safer with the arrests of more than two dozen gang members. They allegedly terrorized the residents of 10 NYCHA developments in Brownsville with broad daylight shootings and two murders. I ain't gonna lie, that look like a dude. That look like a dude. At least 30 weapons were recovered by the NYPD's Gun Violence Suppression Division during the Brooklyn DA's two-year investigation into a deadly and dangerous gang rivalry. One gang is called the Wu. Their opponents, or ops, are called the Cho. They lived in close proximity to each other in Brownsville and used social media and drill music videos to threaten each other and escalate their rivalry. The 32 suspects are charged in four indictments. And the crazy thing is, look at all them dudes, right? I guarantee, I guarantee you those dudes no more than 17, no, <laughs> 16 to 27. Damn. 
with a total of 104 counts, ranging from murder conspiracy to weapons possession. The case covers a total of 27 incidents, including two homicides and 17 additional non-fatal shootings. We have taken these criminals off our streets, and together we will endeavor to keep them off. Their arrests highlight the NYPD's precision policing approach going after the most violent repeat offenders, says Deputy Chief Jason Savino. 32 subjects in this investigation, 30 of them, 30 of them have either been arrested for a shooting or allegedly charged with a shooting with this uh, new indictment. So on at least one occasion, and we have many others with more than one. Why do I mention this? These are the trigger pullers. DA Gonzalez showed videos of the suspects running through the streets in That's broad crazy. daylight, opening fire no matter who was nearby. In one shooting, a three-year-old girl was wounded. Police say it's the most recklessness they've ever seen. These gangs would shoot at the oppositions in the city of high schools, daycare centers, MTA buses, and densely Don't and care. highly populated areas. But the, the cold part is yet to come. Just wait, y'all. Did you know I was the same way? I'm like, damn, nigga, we just gonna be listening to that. <laughs> but he finna get to it, so be patient. Be patient. The cold part, and I got a little story to go with this. Yes, no regard for anybody in the area. If found guilty, those arrested are looking at a minimum of 15 years behind bars, with many looking like, at. I have tricking people, bruh. Right, dang. Anywhere from 25 years to life in downtown Brooklyn. I'm Lisa Evers, Fox 5 News. NYP so the FBI <laughs> running up in the neighborhoods, right? Y'all don't see what's going on. Check it the out, FBI chat. is running up in the hood, grabbing 30 people at 30 to 100 people at a time. But it's, it's crazy, right? Because if you listen to them, The city is under siege. Our children is in the streets slaughtering each other, right? Mm -hmm. Slaughtering each other. Definitely kids. Slaughtering each other. And the thing that kills me is that you see these young boys. You see these young boys, right? You see them outside gunning each other down. Come on, stop calling my phone. You see them outside gunning each other down, right? No retreat, no surrender. The FBI creeps up, mm. pull up on the sidewalk, mm. jump out their cars, riot squad gear, open up the lobby buildings. Easy work. Kicking the apartment doors. Easy work. Kicking the apartment doors. Easy work. Kicking the apartment doors. Nobody fight. Drag Shorty out of his bed. This is the killer now. Same gun he just shot the whole block up with, right? Same gun he just shot the whole block up with. He got a fully loaded clip. Got that gun sitting right in the drawer, right? His mother's in the room. His sister's in the room, right? This is the shooter. Police kick through your door. Grab your mother out the bed by her hair. Yeah, this is what they doing to your mother, the feds. Drag your mother out the mm. bed. Put her hands behind her back. Charleston White. When, when is you, you the one that creating the chaos. And, and, you know, this is not the story that I, I had to go with this message because he haven't even got to the part yet. But I remember my dad said, I was selling dope. My dad found out I was selling dope. My name had got a little loud. My dad had came home in his truck, pulled up. Yo, where you at? Where I'm, man, what you, I'm like, what the fuck going on? I heard you out here selling dope. Where that? Where that shit at? I know you ain't setting that shit up in my house. What the fuck? I didn't, in my head, I was like, nobody would never know it's me. I had people to do it for me. I was um, I was connected, and I found some. I found my older cousins and uncles to work for me because I was connected to another person that was. The big dog. So I thought I might have to keep myself out of the loop just by round around making sure everybody was good. But somehow my name still came up. 
somehow my name got up. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I know, like, niggas just be, like, I don't get it. But anyway, my dad came home, man, and, uh, you know, he went crazy. And, you know, he, uh, I respect my father, man. You know, and uh, I ain't never seen my dad hurt and disappointed like that. And I done did a lot of shit to disappoint my dad. But that right there, that was the worst I ever seen. Like, because I already was successful. I had made it to a spot that I ain't never needed to sell drugs. But you pick up these habits, you hanging around different groups of people, man. And in the hood, even if you successful, and when I say successful, I'm talking about like successful as a young black dude in poverty. I had a couple thousand dollars, had a nice car. My daddy, we had came up, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we had got, got a little money. I ain't need to do what I was doing. That's the cold part about being in the hood. And that's why I want everybody to know that's never, you never was born in the hood. This how cold it is and how hard it is to survive. You can have it all and still get caught up in the web of the environment. I was a, I was, man, my father worked his butt off to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my aunties, I had to stay with my aunts because it was just me and my dad. And uh, I used to stay with my aunts for school. I ain't never had to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to want for stuff, of course, as a kid, but me and my dad went to my dad, my dad worked seven days a week, man. Make sure that, you know what I'm saying? He gave me all that he can give me. And we had made it to a spot. I had the car, I had the rims, I had the music, I had the clothes. Like we had made it to that point. But I had got caught up in the environment of being from the hood. So I started selling dope. For what? When I already had the money. I already had a couple thousands as a young dude in the hood. 18, 19, I had a couple thousands. Had the car, had the girls. I, what I need to sell dope for? That's so. That's what's so cold about the hood for the people that wasn't born in the hood or don't know what it's like. To make it to a spot of comfortability and, and what you would call success, you got to leave the hood. I'm just being honest. The chances of maintaining your success and not getting fucking it off and, and why you living in the hood is very slim. It's very... It's, why we see so many people get caught up in their own hood after they make it? It's so easy to get caught up in that environment. And I know we got... We, we supposed to be on this because this is already going to be long and I don't want to make this... I might have to split it up, but... Like, the hood will eat you up, man. That environment, the, the hood environment will eat you alive. And yeah, so my dad, you know, my dad ended up burning up my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I never sold dope again. That was the last time I sold dope. Man. And, and me, I wasn't selling weed. In my mind, if I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail for some money. Now, mind you, I already had some racks, but what I was selling, yeah, I ain't sold. I ain't, if it ain't hard to sell, I'm not messing with it. Why? Why? You know, that was my mindset. I'm not going to jail over no weed. Oh, give me, give me the big boy. Give me them. Give me y'all. Yeah. Stop stealing my shit. Charleston White, stop stealing my shit. Because you ain't been talking like this. Now back to what I'm saying. Because I've been talking like this. Grab her out of her bed. Put her hands behind her back. Now they got your mother face down. Ass up. In the middle of your house and the projects. You laying in the room. You done shot 30 niggas on a bus. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. My bad. I, I be going to these stories sometimes. But yeah. My dad said. You selling dope when you already got everything you can want. You selling this shit and these people gonna come in here and take everything from me. And that's what I was getting to with my story. I got off track. But 
the mothers being pulled out their house, our parents losing everything because of our choices. Man, sometimes, bro, when we look at this shit, well, we could be some selfish ass kids, dog. Don't give a fuck about nobody. We see parents put their houses up, their cars, they get their kids off these trials, knowing these niggas actually committed the fucking crime that they got charged for. But they tell their parents that they didn't do it. Now they got to go. Their parents out here getting lawyers and putting up everything for like, man, we selfish than a motherfucker. And, and, you know, and I when I was my dad said, man, all this stuff we didn't work for and we didn't, you know, we didn't came up to you going to fuck it all up trying to sell some fucking dope. Boy, you motherfucking crazy. Now, my dad, like I said, my dad already was calling me crazy for the conspiracy shit. Now I'm out here trying to sell dope. When I already came to a position, I went from sleeping in abandoned houses. They, they, they should have been. I slept in abandoned houses and the house that me and my father stayed in was labeled as non-livable. And if we would have got caught, my dad probably would have went to jail. But that's what we can afford. Then we moved up to a hunting cabinet. One bedroom hunting cabinet. Lived there for six, seven years. Then we moved up to where we had a trailer. Um, three bedroom trailer. You know what I'm saying? My, and my daddy got some land and you know, we started coming up. So like we went from a abandoned domain to a, a three bedroom trailer and nigga, you finna fuck it up. That's how it was like, you know, that was success for us. Nigga, I had, I had my crown Vic with 24, but let's get back. To, I'm just saying though, like, how he this story he describing li listen to how the family members got to be subjected to this punishment to this to this ill embarrassment and pain because of what their kids doing Fuck. and you let them come up in your mother's house pull your mother out the bed pull your sister out the bed then drag you out of the drag you out in front of the middle of the projects with Lisa Evers and her cameras recording you going to jail without a fight. Bingo. And, and that's the part I wanted to get to. Dudes will commit all type of crimes against each other in the hood. Police show up and niggas get on their best behavior. I never understood that. I seen somebody. I got an uncle. Probably shouldn't say it. I know somebody that then did it all. When we talk about the hood shit, my family, I lived that life. Uh, like I said, I earned my stars. They weren't just show and tell. Oh, let me go get these. Nah. Uh, so I done seen and I done done and I done heard. I seen somebody make the police entire force buy down. Buy down in a way that this person would fight and hurt and take away anybody that's bothering him or his family members. And at the same time, willing to go to war with the entire police force. I done seen, now, I don't know. Let me say this too. I don't know if Masonic stuff play a role. Because where I'm from, this is big. If you are part of the gang, there are some things they let slide. Now, this guy that I know have been on the run in other states and they knew about it. And they didn't bother him. And they was the entire force Stayed away from him. He constantly do things. And nobody check him. And he was willing to go to war with any of them. And, you know, they would lock him up. They let him up. But I done seen where he done took them to the back. Like, so I know he was out there that would commit the same crime against the police force as they would 
the person that's on the street. Which I'm not saying no one should want to commit crimes against the police force. But what I'm saying is, it's just amazing to see how so many dudes shut down against the system, but would kill you over two dollars. But that same cop can spit in his face, do something to his family, and all he'll say, "Man, that's some fucking bullshit. We're gonna sue their ass." It is crazy. That's just how strong of a game that they have over the, the community to where. And you know this so crazy? None of black people, we look at them as brave motherfuckers when they stand up against cops. But for us, we, we like, nigga, I would never try that. Think about that, y'all. I would never talk to a cop the way I see some non-black people talk to cops. Like, for black people, most of us, we don't even have a thought in our mind. I, I know a thing I seen, it, and it's real, where... You can sh you don't have to let down your window. You can show your your license and shit all and boot. It, it's some other shit, but it's like it be like you don't gotta you don't gotta let down your window. Who do you call a sergeant? Call a sergeant as request. Nigga, who what? Be honest. Most of us black people, nigga, we not finna take them type of chances. What the fuck you want? You can see it. If you can't see it, then get somebody down here that can see it. I'm not rolling out. Nigga, we're not doing that. But it's just amazing, man, to know that, you know, the despair that they have over us to where we'll go to war with each other. But if the police show up, she, nigga, get into a baby format. Y'all got that much violence for each other, mm. but you willing to let the colonizer the alphabet boys with them letters come up in your building, drag your mother out. You, I don't care if you call yourself the woe, the cho, or what. You willing to let them come inside your house, drag your mama out the bed in her panties. Mm. She got a t-shirt in her, her panties on. Drag her out the house. So me, you mean to tell me we that ill? We mm. the illest killer gorillas in the jungle, where you can see a man outside with a three-year-old baby, the wolves and chose, boom, boom, boom. How Nas said back in the days, don't give a fuck who get hit as long as the drama's lit. Mm. Nasty ass hooligan, stay on that piranha shit. So that's the that's the that's the time that y'all on, right? Well, y'all don't care if y'all hit a three-year-old girl. But when it's time, like, because you already know, and I don't get this about you cats. Y'all know when them alphabet boys come knocking on that door and they drag your mama out of that bed and they put them handcuffs on you, oh, you already you know. Done. You're done. Nine times out of ten, you doing a minimum of 15 years in jail to life. You're done. You're done. It's just that simple. But you just put your hands behind your back. Man, I like I said, I I I know real dudes that like I said, I don't want to be putting them labels. I don't want to say them words, but I know what y'all would say. Oh, that nigga a gangster. I know dudes like that, and it's only one that I have seen that fought back or had the police force to where they won't touch them, or if they do touch them, they ask them, "Come on." I, I seen him. Yo, come on. Go to jail now. Come on. Come on. Go calm down. Come on. Get in. Come on now. Come on. We're just going to come on down here just a just couple hours, then we'll let you back out. Come on. I seen it. I seen it. And I have seen real dudes also done some crazy things. And when the police show up, they take off running. Or they go to jail without resisting. Either they take off running or go to jail without resisting. 
It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like you practiced this shit your whole life. Mm. That's that's crazy. So our babies could die in the street. But y'all won't fight for y'all freedom? Just think about that though. Motherfuckers shooting innocent bystanders. Won't fire at that police. And I'm not I'm not trying to tell no nigga to start beef with police. I'm just trying to show you the mindset that like just think about that. Motherfucker or shoot an innocent bystander. Old or young. But won't they apply that pressure to a, to an officer. That's crazy. What? Mm. This ain't just one neighborhood they run it through. IPD. Uh, all kinds of takedowns all over town. Let's go to uh, Lisa Evers. She's got a tip about this almost before it happened, or even before it happened. Lisa, what's happening? Well, did you hear that? Hmm. I had to slow down. They said, hey, Lisa Evers, you had a tip about this before this happened. I want y'all to understand something. Lisa Evers is at... She's in the middle of battle rap, rap culture, black culture. She's in the middle. They gave her the heads up before they raided these projects. Did she give you the heads up? I'm up by the NYPD. Uh, all kinds of takedowns all over town. Let's go to uh, Lisa Evers. She's got a tip about this almost before it happened or even before it happened. Lisa, what's happened? Did you hear him again? Hmm. Am I slow or are you slow? Can can you hear? Owned up by the NYPD. Uh, all kinds of takedowns hey. all over town. Let's hey, go hey. to uh, Lisa Evers. My She's bad. got a tip about hey, this. You know what's so crazy? Like, like, motherfucker be saying, fuck 12. But deep down inside, niggas fear the fuck out of 12. Nigga be saying all oh, that shit, man. Come on, me. I, I was born in the middle of the hood. I lived in it. I done heard niggas fuck twelve, fuck them niggas, fuck them pigs. But I ain't never showed that type of action. Niggas say some shit, but I ain't never, never. Like I said, I only seen one person. I'm thirty years old. I only seen one person. That walked down the street with an AK-47. And dare anybody to fuck with him. And. Nothing happened. Force. Jail or anything like that. I seen a motherfucker asking him. Can he. Can he chill out? Can he calm down? I seen them asking. Shit crazy. Almost before it happened, or even before it happened. Lisa, what's happening? Well, Greg and Rosanna, we're here in Harlem at the scene of one of the biggest NYPD gang takedowns ever. It started very early this morning here at the Manhattanville houses and also a couple blocks away at the Grand houses. Let me show you some of the video that we captured here as police were taking out what they are telling us are some of the most dangerous gang members in the city. One of the suspects was from what's called the Stack 3 gang. And as he was led in handcuffs into the police van, he yelled out, Happy Stack Day, still defiant. Now, residents here in these housing developments have been terrorized by these gangs, have been experienced a number, a number of shootings and other types of crime, including drug dealing and weapons possession that have been going on here for quite some time. Now, what we're hearing is from the Manhattan DA's office, more than 100 suspects are being indicted today. And this That's is one of, of the largest numbers of gangs that they've taken down as part of what's called Operation Crew Cut. This was begun under Commissioner Kelly back in 2010, working with the Manhattan Manhattan DA and these gang members were basically, oh, according to authorities, acting as if they had total impunity to do their dirty business and put it out on Facebook and other social media outlets. And they were bragging about it, not realizing that law enforcement was hip to them. They had developed codes that were so sophisticated that the DA's office had to actually come up with almost a textbook of code language to explain to prosecutors and police what they were talking about.
talking about when they were making threats against rival gang members and also uh, threatening to do other things in the community that uh, many people here were very, very upset by. So a major bust this, this early this morning took place here at the Grand Houses. We're also hearing from sources that one of the suspects who was picked up might have been connected with the murder of that high school aspiring female high school basketball player a couple of years ago, the one who had won a Division I scholarship and was on her way to a female basketball star career. So there's a lot to this case, and uh, investigators feeling very satisfied with what happened this morning. They also picked up some other people, not necessarily involved with these cases, who had outstanding warrants, because what we've learned from being out here this morning is they have hand scanners, portable hand scanners, almost like mini iPads that they can take, scan people as they're doing these raids and picking up other people who are wanted for outstanding uh, violations and other outstanding crimes. So a very busy morning here. More than 400 police officers, very specialized units from the NYPD, the gang unit leading off on it, the OCCB, the Organized Crime Control Bureau, Narcotics Division, and also the Public Housing Police who are very familiar with... I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. And now where y'all want to go in the comments section. I'm going somewhere with this. So you shut up. You learn something while I'm educating you. Give these sus. Because I want you to understand something. Where are we going with this? Now, I know it took a minute to get here, but this, like I said, every point that he touched on was major. Check this out, bro. Listen up closely. I know we took a minute to get here, but please listen up closely, dog. And this is what I be saying. Like, when we see all this Kanye West and this Kyrie Irving stuff, this takeoff stuff, a lot of that shit just be shade. Because behind closed doors, see, I had no idea about this. But all this is going on why Takeoff Delph is popular, why the Kanye West stuff is pop popular, the Kyrie Irving stuff is popular. It, it, it's, it's all kind of Delphs that are happening, celebrity Delph. So that right there cloud a lot of the minds. But listen to this, y'all. Sadly, and now they're getting $4 billion we will wage war upon the cartels and stop the fentanyl and deadly drugs from killing 200,000 Americans per year. And I will ask Congress for legislation ensuring that drug dealers and human traffickers, these are terrible, terrible, horrible people who are responsible for death, carnage, and crime all over our country. Every drug dealer during his or her life on average, will kill 500 people with the drugs they sell, not to mention the destruction of families. Mm. But we're going to be asking everyone who sells drugs, gets caught selling drugs, to receive the death penalty for their heinous acts. Because it's the only... That nigga just said... Anybody that is caught selling drugs, that is, anybody dealing with drugs, he want the death penalty. Go in the hood, make fentanyl. Go in the hood, make that. Didn't they see? Like I said, this is why I fuck with Hassan Campbell. He do a great job, bro. He bring he do a great job. Who in the hood is dealing with the type of drugs that is out here taking over the streets? The most a nigga know how to produce is some weed. Now, of course, niggas might to learn how to do this other shit now, but who is the the people that is putting this shit together so therefore motherfuckers can get strung out on it and terrorize 
their community. We not, we not, we not making this shit. They are out here producing this shit on a large scale. They are out here jacking motherfuckers and putting the shit back out. Y'all think this shit just on TV for fun? The police still raid the dope house, take all the dope, and then go back and sell the dope? This shit is real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Bro, it's real. It's not a joke. It's not a joke that the FBI's are the major and the biggest drug dealers in the world. The CIA, those people are the biggest drug dealers in the world. You think drug just can move across the country without some type of transport security? And I ain't talking about no motherfucking hinge, um, henchmen and all that shit. No, nigga, I'm talking about real type of protection. Nigga, it's order with this shit. It's order, nigga. But, we don't but he talking about the death penalty, right? The ones that are making it are them. But he want to kill the niggas in the hood because there's no opportunities. And our son Campbell going to say that as well. When there's no opportunities in the hood, what other choices do you have? Like I said, I didn't have to sell drugs. I chose to. But for most people that sell drugs, let's just be honest. What are the choices that they have? They got to find a way to leave their community when they don't have no money, nothing to leave the community. So what motherfuckers trying to do? Some of y'all are going to say, well, they don't got to sell drugs. Most of y'all that say that, you are not in the environment. So therefore, you don't understand. It's easy to say what well, motherfuckers that shouldn't do or should do when you ain't never been in this situation or you ain't in this situation. Some of y'all make it out. A lot of people don't make it out. For real. I made it out. I know a lot of niggas that did make it out. I know a lot of niggas I tried to get out. They mind wouldn't let them come out. They came out, went right back. I know niggas like that. I got homies like that. We don't need any more blue ribbon committees. We don't need, I don't like to say this, and I don't even know if the American public is ready for it. And a lot of my people say, please don't say that, sir. That's not nice. They kill 500 people each on average. And if you don't do this, in China, when I was with President Xi, I said, President, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we don't. He looked at me like I didn't know what I was doing. He said, uh, no, we don't have a drug. How come you don't have a drug problem? He said, quick trial. What is a quick trial? Quick, I sort of knew. What is a quick trial? That's where if you get caught dealing drugs, you have an immediate and quick trial. And by the end of the day, you're executed. So the solution to our drug problem is to kill a nigga. Think about that now. They not killing you for rape. They not killing you for murder. They want to kill you for drugs. When they produce the drug. Bro, think about how cold that shit is. You know who gonna be the target, right? Alright. Keep waiting on them people to go after the cartel. How long have the cartel been thriving? Once again, the niggas, you don't become that successful that powerful without having one of the three letters bureaus working in your corner it don't happen nigga you don't get the power of the cartel without having the police access without having the fbi the cia to work with you the dea you don't get the move like that without them people you don't get that powerful you don't get that big 
You don't get dope to go from here, this country to that country. Come on, man. That's a terrible thing. Niggas, you niggas that selling drugs, oh, uh, you know, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not advocating for niggas to sell drugs and get away with it. I sold drugs and seen the danger that it caused, which was why I was happy when my dad stopped me from doing it. But what I am saying is, there's not a lot of options in the poverty community. And drug is a job that, drug dealer job is easy to get. You don't got to fill out no applications. You're a felon that can't get a job. It's easy to get, be a drug dealer. You're a young dude um, trying to make some fast money. Easy to be a drug dealer. But that's what they promote to us. Think about this. I don't want to go too far, but like all the rap songs. What? Nigga, Future is one of the most successful rappers in the world. And all he do is promote drugs. So if your community is constantly pumping out the idea of drugs and this and that. How can niggas not get caught up in the game? Come on, bruh. Let's be real. If if our rap music, the things that we glorify constantly promote killing and drugs, how we not gonna get caught up in it? You think everybody gonna make it out? Man, stop the bullshit. Just cause you made it out, don't mean everybody gonna make it out. Some niggas gonna get caught up in that motherfucking spell. <laughs> Come on. But they have no drug problem. The only drug problem they have is they make the fentanyl that comes into our country, and I had him stopping it. Under y'all paying attention? Are y'all listening? Are y'all listening? See, this is what y'all gotta understand, right? The war on drugs is in the black community. Bingo. What I got to say that again? Bingo. For you to understand what I'm saying. Them niggas ain't going to touch the cartel. Come on, man. Saying to you, the war on drugs. They promote started drugs. In they your community. To neutralize you since the days, the early days of the Black Panthers. The war has been in our community. Here's my thing, right? I feel like the Italians feel when you watch the mob movies. They tell you that they don't accept drug selling, drug dealing in the Italian communities. So I feel like black people, black men, need to come together and keep the drugs out of our community. I feel like that we need to put our foot down, right? But when the people that's flooding our community, mm. when the government, because it's always been the government, the CIA. Look at the show Snowfall. Come on, bro. How many of y'all watched this show Snowfall? How many of y'all know that shit is real. That shit is based off a true story. These people be leaving li little niggas out to dry. What's that little kid that was working with the FBI to help take down on um, the Black Panther and then they left this nigga out to dry? Or was it, it was an, I don't think it was the Black Panther, I think it was another organization. A fucking kid. I don't know which organization was, but they had a kid to help take down the organization and the kid still ended up going to fucking prison, nigga. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. To flood our communities with these drugs. Facts. When they're flooding our communities with these drugs. They flood the community. And then the same people that's flooding our communities with these drugs decide wanna, that they're going to kill our children. Want to execute you. For mm. selling drugs? Wow. That's a totally different animal that we playing with here, people. And I'm like, yo. All these black YouTube platforms... All these days, I haven't said nothing. How y'all skip back? How you skip past the most important conversation on the internet? I mean, okay, y'all sit up there, y'all jumped on Quilla, because y'all see brothers like me on that. But how you skip past a president waging war 
to mm. the point to where that now, because we all got friends, I'm going to keep it all the way funky. My brother T Mac and all my homies from Cortland Ave, Jackson Ave, Meros, that just came home from junk drug charges. My hellbell niggas, the niggas that you see me with, all my niggas is just coming home from, from kingpin charges. Because all of us got caught up in the game back in the days. Brothers did they time. Shout out to these brothers. They did they time. Now there's a new generation of children getting ready to fall into the same trap. Mm, bingo. Because okay. the powers to be pushed lyrical homicide through the speakers. Bingo. Lyrical genocide through the speakers. When you watch TV, all you see is murder, death, kill on a black man. So what you think? When you turn on... So if all you see and, and that's all you hear, what are your options of success? Come on, bro. What I just told you, success for me was getting in a fucking three-bedroom trailer. Was going from my house with nothing that water was leaking in and we had to have buckets all around the fucking house. When come through the house, you had to use the bathroom my side. We went from that to a three bedroom trailer. That was success for me. Come on, bro, because that's all I seen. Come on. TV, all you see is our black men waging war at each other. Like, come on, YouTube. Nigga ain't trying to get no 10 bedroom house. Nigga ain't seen that coming up. Nigga don't know what that look like. Nigga don't want that. Nigga want a place that's comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't travel the world now, so I, I know it's things out there that I would like to have, but niggas ain't stressing about that because I ain't seen it when I was coming up. Yeah. Every black man, woman, and child in the hood need to be having this conversation. Because it's to the point now where you can't turn your eye to what little Johnny is doing next door. Because mm. little Johnny is selling drugs next door. And your son might start selling drugs with little Johnny next door. He might only sold a couple of drugs here and there. But when the FBI comes into the black community, they, they always all. make the crime scene bigger. Bingo. And when they lock your children up from these drug charges, you have a president that's saying put them Look at how many Ricos we are witnessing in one year. Look at all these crews getting taken down through Rico charges. Look at how they keep coming in and snatching up the groups. Man, some, some going on, right? Come on, something going on, right? To death. I think that's a decision that black people need to make against black people or how to deal with us in our own community when we sell drugs. Personally, I think once we clean our community up, then that's a decision that we need to make whether we're going to get sentence each other to the death penalty. And yes, I think drug dealers should be de dealt with yes. by death. But not when the game is that. rigged. Yeah. And you got military, CIA, FBI flooding the black community and poisoning our children. And then they're going to sit up there. The same people that supplies our children with the drugs to sell is the same people that's going to give them the death penalty. That's crazy. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all that, already see That's so crazy. The same people that are supplying the drug dealers are going to give the drug dealer the death penalty. That's crazy. They playing with my numbers. Mm. At least hit the button and fight back, man. Because ain't none of these other pra platforms talking about this. That's I don't think y'all understand That's what facts. we are facing in America as black people right now. I'm only just getting started. If so bad. Now, I think this is the second part, and then we're going to wrap it up. It's the, it's the last one.
It's three things. No, this is the third one. It's three things I wanted you to. Man, this live is insane. This is a two hour live. Y'all make sure y'all go check it out, Hassan Campbell. The entire live is crazy, but I, I wanted you to see the de the takeoff, the Donald Trump, and then the the Joe Biden, Joe Biden situation, and then the Jews that are being charged for organ harvesting and trafficking humans. Nobody ain't talking about that. Ain't nobody talking about that. That's why the Kanye West and Kyrie Irving shit is so fucking popular. That's to take your attention off what's really going on. These Jews out here, but it ain't just them. Come on, it ain't just them. This is America that we living in today. This and we not talking about low level civilians. Like motherfucker, I would be trying to speak up, nigga. You go to school with me. Shut the fuck up, bro. Unless you going to school to point the niggas out. And that's why they can't find no suspect for none of these crimes going on. None of these killings that going on. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. Say that for another day. This is America. Chinese Communist Party are operating police stations in the United States in an effort to surveil Chinese dissidents. It seems obvious the U.S. shouldn't allow its most significant ge geopolitical rival and oppressive okay, this, communist this regime to establish police stations in the U.S. What authority or jurisdiction does the CCP have in the U.S.? I just spoke to my audience about how China was coming in and setting up police stations throughout the fucking U.S. like three weeks ago. And now we see this. This is crazy. My audience, y'all remember, we just talked about this. We just talked. I just told y'all about how China was out here setting up police stations in America. China. How the fuck can another country come and set up a fucking police? What? How? Okay. I'm going to let him tell y'all. And I don't know which one when it testifying. Well, Senator, uh, like you, I'm very concerned about this. Uh, we are aware of the existence of these stations. I have to be careful about discussing our specific investigative work, but to me it is outrageous uh, to think that the Chinese police would attempt to set up shop you know, in New York and say without proper coordination. How the fuck do you get the authority to set up a motherfucking... Police station in somebody else's country. Nigga. And they got multiple throughout the US. It's not just in a couple states, nigga. It's like, I think five, six states. If I'm not mistaken. And it violates city and, and circumvents. Uh, standard judicial law enforcement uh, cooperation processes. And the reason, the reason this is so important is because we have seen a clear pattern of the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party, exporting their, trans, their repression right here into the U.S. And we've had now a number of indictments that you may have seen of the Chinese engaging in uncoordinated law, quote unquote, law enforcement action right here in the United States, harassing, stalking, surveilling, blackmailing. So another country is out here setting up surveillance and blackmailing peoples of the U.S. What the fuck? Who signed off on that, nigga? How the fuck do you come to another country and set up shop? Nigga, this some whole GTA shit, ain't it? In real life. Uh, people who they just don't like or disagree with the, the Xi regime. Uh, and so it's a real problem and it's something that we're talking with our, our foreign partners about as well because we're not the only country where this is. What y'all missing what I'm saying? 
Come on, stop YouTube. Like, stop, man, stop. We had 5,700 people in the building. Stop. What y'all missing? What I'm saying? Hmm. I had a conversation. Matter of fact, I ain't going to even call out her name. With somebody that think they smarter than me, right? I had a conversation about China. I'm glitching. Why am I glitching? I had a conversation with a female that thinks she's smarter than me. And I brought up China opening up our, our precincts in New York City. Oh, that's just the monitor that the people and do blah, 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 right? So now, skip it past that. So now y'all listening to the FBI. The FBI is saying that they have a problem <laughs> with the Chinese government. Mm. Opening up police stations in America. So when have America not been indebted to China? I'm 30 years old. As far as I can remember, all my life I have heard that China, America owed China a great deal of money. That's all my life I have heard that. So now, China get to just come and set up shop because America can't pay their bill? Is it money that they want? Or is it something else? In New York City, five of them already. Do y are y'all not paying attention to what's going no, on? I told y'all years City. ago, China's getting ready to take over. China is in, America is in debt to China. We owe China. And, and China owns all the tolls. Like, just think about that. All the tolls that you go through, China owns those as well. They own the tolls roads. And like, what? make it make sense. This is the takeover. We are in trouble. There is no laws to protect us. There is no laws to protect us. America is for sale. But there's laws to protect them. Anybody and everybody in America. I said that, what, seven months ago? I think I made a video. I hope I can find it. How everybody have a bill to protect them except who? Everybody have a bill of protection. Everybody. And the crazy thing is, they got the bill on a fucked up case as if black people was out there attacking their race. So everybody that have a bill, it's because, oh, black people was attacking them. Man, get the fuck out of here. Think about that. Everybody have a bill in protection from black people. That's cold has a hate crime bill mm. to protect them from you. Wow. I, Why is that? I, I said that seven months ago. Black man, there's something sacred about your blood. Bingo. There is something sacred about your blood. Bingo. You have to learn to start looking at yourself like it is something sacred about your blood. Mm. And stop killing your blood or your cuz. We all we got in the last days of America. Shit is about to hit the fan like you ain't never seen. It's like, damn, you can't go to college without your daughters getting a snot. G girls, daughters getting a snot box ride. Nope, she got power drived by another a group of females. And the crazy thing about that situation is. The Mexico authority said they could find no foul play when that's a whole video <laughs> of foul play. Nigga, the game is so cold. How could you report there is no foul play when everybody is watching a fucking video of foul play? Nigga, it don't even make sense. But that's why I said, I think deep down inside, they know the American people 
are stupid. They know that they got niggas so drugged out with entertainment and life itself that a nigga can't even stand to think outside of the box. Or a nigga, nigga don't even got to think outside the box. Nigga can't think on what he can actually see in front of him. Our babies is killing our babies. Hmm. Who signed up to live in this world? Who want to live in the world like this? I don't went from telling my daughters and my sons. Teach your children not to kill my children. I done taught my children not to kill your children. Now I got to teach my kids prepare for battle. It's on. It's on. I can't teach my kids to throw in a white flag when your children is declaring war. I can't teach my kids to be peaceful. We shall overcome when your children are headhunters. Nah. Everywhere we go, it's war. Ain't nothing to laugh about when the babies is dying. Tiffany Taylor. Salute highs. My favorite celebrity gossip is cool. I'll be here for the message, though. Pay attention to your circle. What What? and leave the what? Let me tell y'all something, man. I don't think y'all understand where we at as a people. Kanye West just got manhandled by who? Kyrie, they got him go. up there now. Finally, he finna talk about it. We've been waiting for a while, man. This is the one that I really want to try to hear it, bro. Like, please hear this shit. That's why I said this lie right here, bro. He went, he went off. It went off. And what I mean by he went off, like that nigga went from powerful subject, powerful subject, powerful subject, and gave raw material behind it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I said. That's, ain't nobody doing it like Brody. I'm just gonna keep it a buck. He entertaining with it. But the message is real. And that's why I think so many people caught up in Charleston White. Like, I, I was fucking with Charleston White, but I see the play. He exposed his play, though. Like, you don't got to see it. You caught up in the macking. The people that can't see Charleston White play, they really caught up in the macking. They think everybody else caught up in the macking because, see, I ain't going to lie. I just now seen it. I just now seen it. But this niggas out here been seeing it, seeing the Charleston White play. Charleston White, it, it's some strange shit going on behind it. Real talk. Yeah, I, 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 I salute all the positive that come out of his mouth. But it's some strange. Charleston White got some type of engine backing him. Because for him not to be doing, I don't want to get into it. Something strange about him. Although he gives some powerful messages, I, I I just like me, I try to stay away. Like I said, when it when it when the message when the powerful message come, nigga, I, I I soak it in. I don't care who it is. But the man is um he a frog. Yeah, he a frog. Ap I apologize. Apologizing. Your black men are being pumped right in front of your face. But let me show you something. Check this Let out. Let me show you something. Check this out. Huh? This is crazy right Here's here. Here's the death blow. Let me. And I haven't heard this nowhere else. <laughs> Hit you with the death blow. It's on a massive scale. Amongst those taken into custody by the FBI were city mayors, politicians, and religious leaders. The authorities needed buses to cope with the sheer scale of the operation. New Jersey's corruption problem is one of the worst, if not the worst, in the nation. Corruption is not only pervasive, it, become, it has become ingrained 
in New Jersey's political culture. It's thought that religious charities controlled by prominent rabbis were used. Are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? FBI arrested 17 Jewish rabbis in New Jersey charged with trafficking human organs, body parts, and money laundering. Come on, dog. Ooh. To launder cash. The arrests were part of a 10-year operation that uncovered money laundering on an international scale, as well as corruption and the sale of human organs in the U.S., Switzerland, and Israel. The list of people we arrested sounds like it should be the roster for a meeting of community leaders. But sadly, they weren't meeting in a board. Why this not mainstream, though? I ain't gonna lie. This nigga has son Campbell. This lie right here that he did, this lie right here was fucking crazy. This nigga, I'm telling you, he went from bulls out of bulls out of bulls out of bulls out of bulls out. Check out the full live, because I mean, I'm not going to be able to show you the full live. We are already an hour in. And if you made it this far, man, put a two in the chat. Let me know if you made it this far. How come that right there did not go mainstream? Hmm. Room this morning, they were in the FBI. Please. So, it's safe to say that the people that Kanye West is apologizing to. Mm. So it's safe to say that the people that Kyrie is apologizing to mm. is on the news for stealing organs, mm. harvesting organs. Mm. Human trafficking? Take the what and leave the what? Y'all not paying attention to what's going on in this world that you living in? Mm. Y'all not paying attention? Wow, man. To what's going on in this world that you're living in? today that details what we have uncovered. We are also sending letters to the Biden administration officials and Biden family associates renewing our request for voluntary production of documents relevant to this investigation. This is an investigation of Joe Biden, the President of the United States, and why he lied to the American people about his knowledge and participation in his family's international business schemes. National security interest... Look at that. Look how, look how he going from bulls out of bulls out of bulls out of bulls out. And I told you, this is going to be the last one, then we're going to close it off. Nigga killing it, bro. Why the committee conduct investigation, and we will pursue all avenues, avenues that have long been ignored. Committee Republicans have uncovered evidence of federal crimes committed by and to the benefit of members of the president's family. These include conspiracy or defrauding the United States, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, Violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, violations of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, <laughs> tax evasion, money laundering, Bro. and conspiracy to... Why ain't none of this mainstream news? Hello? Why is it this mainstream news? We talking about a whole lot of distractions. It's a whole lot of distractions going on. Huh? Yeah. A whole lot of distractions going on. Yeah. These are the charges that your president is being charged with. These are the charges that Biden is dealing with right now. This is what Biden is being accused of. Trafficking humans? Your president. This is what your president is being accused of by the American government. Black people, y'all better wake up. Yo, I'm late. What's good? Would you like to see Trump in office again? 
It doesn't matter who's in office. Whatever, whoever gets in office. Is they all work for the same people. Like, that's what I be... Like, bro, when y'all be talking about, oh, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. My nigga, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? Stop playing with your mind, bro. Stop playing with yourself. My nigga, it's no different. It don't matter who in office. You not gonna benefit from it. It's, it's, it's bad for black people. Mm. See, <laughs> Trump asked act, black people, what do you got to lose, right? Hmm. And then Black Lives Matter, Until Freedom, Tamika Mowry, my son, and these celebrities, they got together and got Trump out of that office, right? Now Trump is coming back after black people gave Trump his ass to kiss. What you think going to happen now? One of the first things he sent up there saying is the death penalty to drugs. Mm, that's true. The drug game is the only game that the black they people have in the black community. Outside of scamming, what do you think is about to happen to your children? It's a you know, it's about to get ugly. Mm. I don't, hey, and you know the crazy thing about this. Like the older people, they not understanding that they gonna die off. The world we gonna leave behind gonna be crazy. We, me, my generation gonna die off. The world that our kids gonna have to deal with is gonna be crazy. I think y'all understand? It's already crazy, but black people, Shh. they need a cover up right now. Shout out to the six thousand people in the building. They need a cover up right now. Fingers are being pointed. High elected officials, your president is being accused of trafficking. Your president is being accused of trafficking. The people that got Kanye West kissing ass right now, Kyrie Irving is being accused of trafficking and we are being folded. And in order to make this go away, something big has to happen. Distractions. That's what. Uh, well, that's why we keep seeing all these. They need a distraction. Mm -hmm. Take off with some of that. It was some of what of that. Mm -hmm. I told you it was going to be a big celebrity death. There's going to be more. Crystal, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Sixty-one people in the sixty-one hundred people in the building. Hey. Yo, man, listen. Like I said, bro, I rock with it heavy, man. Um, Hassan Campbell, bro, he do an awesome job, man. Say what you want to say, you feel me? But Brody be bringing the news. And he bring the news like no other. So, man, I definitely take in. You know, like I said, you go do your own research on what he's saying. Um, and when I watched this this morning, I went and verified and, and make sure what I was hearing was correct. And I see the stories. It's crazy. It's not mainstream. The the money laundering, the Oregon thing, like we've been knowing about that for how long? Come on, we've been hearing about the newspaper in the body for how long? Come on, bro. Come on, dog. Like, y'all let me know what y'all think. I know this a long one. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Hey. It was a epic fucking live. It's a it's a it's a two hour live. It's more in here that he talking about, but those was the parts that I wanted you to like. That those topics right there, crazy. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man. If y'all enjoyed this, make sure y'all hit that like button. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Thank y'all for the.